Hello guys, what's in here? So today is another video for Wim Techniques. It's fifth one now and today's topic is about quick fit list. Yeah, and the its companion feature is called location list. And we're gonna see today how to use it and the difference between quick fit list and also location list. And lastly we're gonna see additional uh, usage of this with TCC compiler for your project. Okay, so in the basic idea for the quick pick list here is that um, it's like a to-do list that you gonna one by one jump to the file and then okay I need to fix it, I need to do that. But but it's not merely about the to-do list, it's about the earlier list globally that you need to fix one by one. Uh, yeah, yeah. More like a earlier or something like that. And there's uh, the prior step that you need to do is that you need to populate all the entry into the list first in order for Wim to be able to provide a jumping convenient. And okay, let's see the, the, the setup that we have. Um, what I have here is the very simple C++ program. It is no need to be C++, but it can be other things as well, but in this case, I'm going to go with this. So what I see here is that uh, I have the main source file, it's going to consume the header only library. It's just a simple print. So what I have in main is, is here, okay, uh, means type it in as well, I'm going to fix that. Um, and also what I have in root is this one, this one, and you're going to see struct is T. Actually it's intentionally that um, we're going to see later in the last part of the video about uh, it's related to combining this use step with the DCC compiler, and you can see the error, the log. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you later, but okay. So yeah, um, the main source file is gonna just utilize the print hello world. So let's jump right in into the main. I'm gonna fix it to uh, it's back first, and another one called okay. All right, so let's see. We are at the, the main source file, and the first step we need to do before we can utilize the quick pick list is we need to populate it. Um, and we use WimGrep in order to populate the search. So, WimGrep, what is this? It's like a it's similar to Grep, but uh, there are some different in mind that WimGrep might be, uh, would be slower than external reclaim that we can use because it's, it's gonna like uh, um, read the files put into the memories and one by one but the benefit from this we have is that it's use no need to install external program like grape you have to use like mostly on Linux or Unix platform or maybe on Windows but you have to use maybe Sigman you have to do, use the USL or something like that but anyway I'm gonna base on what default we have that is with grab is good enough so and we can do the search okay so let's see what we can do here mm. okay let's let's open that file again first because I cannot remember what is gonna do the search okay I'm gonna do some search for input so we grab and we're gonna uh, you can use regular expression here as well we need to start with input and then j what does j mean here is that um, if we supply j it means that if the search file the first match no need to jump to that location right away just yet but if you know j it means that it's gonna jump okay we don't need to jump, so we're gonna supply that. And now, this thing. What does this thing mean? Is that it's like kind of like a white card to search recursively. So you specify this is gonna search for recursively deep down uh, into the directory for the file that had extension cpp and hash. And the limitation for Wim to recurse like this is a 100 directory dip. Okay, and we just 
enter. And now we have we populate the list now. We can see the results for all the entry that we populate where C open. And you can see here, yep. We add the first location in cool, so it jumped to the first line. You can do something with this and go back to that window and then select the second entry. It's gonna jump to that file as well. Yeah. Quite convenient, right? Okay. So and now um, actually we have no need to like a base on the window and we select by ourselves we can also uh, use without it by using another command. So I'm gonna close this first. Close this with C C close. Yeah, C close. Prefix with C. Okay. And the C I'm gonna jump back to the first entry by using C first. Okay. Jump next to the second entry is C next. Yeah. If you are at the last entry and you go for C next, uh, it is not going to wrap around to the first entry no. So you have to yeah, use some something else. Maybe you want to go to the first entry, you C first, you wanna go to last, something like that. Yeah. And uh when support the lastly search for the quick list by 10 yeah so what you have here you can you can use see history in order to like a list all of the search all of the list that you have done populate so we have just one list right i'm gonna do another populate populating so maybe i'm gonna try to find std or something like that uh, for all files. Okay, so you see open again, and you you now see that the uh, um what we populate which will be placed at the current list that we're gonna work with. So here, yeah. So you, you close the window by C close, and then you use C history again. You're gonna see that uh, this symbol indicate that we working with this second list, and you're gonna see also the command that we just executed. What if you want to jump right back to the first list? What we're gonna do? So we can use C history, which is one I mean the first entry C history, and now the first entry is gonna be put as the current list that we're going to work with. You can check it by C open and you're going to see that this is actually the, the result from the web grave populating the entry that we use. And yeah, go back. Close. And um, apart, instead of using C history to jump between the list, we can use C older and C newer. In this case, we are at the first list, right? We don't want to go to the newer, so C newer. Now, the second list is the second list is the current list now. You can see here the symbol indicating here. Okay. What if I want to go back to the order? C order and modify the C history. Yeah, that's it. And what if I go C order again? That there's no more. So yeah, the same that it doesn't wrap. Yeah, so keep this in mind. And now uh, we are quite done with quick list. Quick fix list now. We're gonna uh, proceed next to location list. See the difference between these two. So I'm gonna open another client. Yeah. So um, my library that hash is on the left side. And main the CVP is on the right window. And what you see here, even if we split, this means that we have open two windows now. Um, quick fix list is like a global that only one instance of it exists for the single terminal session. So even if I start populating the things from the main source file, but I even if 
also that I'm at a different window, I can also see the globally list. Yeah, and you can see here it's gonna open at the window that is start as the populating into it. Yeah, it's globally. So if I choose the second one on the left window, we're gonna jump to that. But uh, what if I open to the first one or something like that? Uh, okay. So the difference is that um, I'm gonna close this first. Um, for the location list, it's like a local per window. So if you open two windows, you're gonna have as max two location list. So I'm gonna do Wim Grape again, but it's not Wim Grape now, it's gonna be prefix by L. It's like a location list, Wim Grape, and you're gonna populate in the, the things. You're gonna try to find um, maybe Lab Curry Blaze. And you can, um, when you search, is search globally. No need to be only the files on that window. So, only what is locally is the list itself, not the search. So, the search still be globally. And you can see here. Now, and you're gonna see the entry populating in L. Okay. Okay. We have one. Two, three. So, yeah, that's quite right. Jump to that. Jump to the second one, and then jump to the last one. Yeah. Okay. And I we we can also do with the command as well. So we're gonna close first of L close, and then L previous L previous. You can notice that we are at one of three, so this means that you can you know the right direction where you wanna go. So we are at one of three now, so we L next, so we go to the second one, or maybe we'll go to the last one, L last, or L first, something like that. Okay, so we're gonna open the location list on the left window, and then on the right window. I'm gonna do the same. Let's see. Uh, let's try L open. As you can see here, I didn't populate any list, any yeah, location list in this window just yet, so there's none. Um, I'm gonna do the same L with red. With, um, maybe try to search for STD, not jump. CPP. Okay, open the list. You can see it's only one, and the location list window, as you can see here on the left side and on the right side, is different to clearly see the result list. Uh, I jump, and I can, yeah, the search is global. The jump also global as well. No need to be specific, specifically tied to that file that open on that window. Again, yeah, I already multiple time um, yep so now that's the difference between quick fix list and the location list okay so the, the suitable usage for this game maybe you can think of quick fix list as like a globally error or quick fix to do list for you to um, do across the board of the project but the location list is something that um, in that specifically of window that um, you, you separate your work type or the mindset for each window that you want to do some work. So locate, location list is more like a, okay, this is a local one that I'm going to work with. I'm going to start with this window and do something else different from the global one, something like that. Okay, so we're going to close all this and then we're going to jump to the next topic, the last one that we can combine, I mentioned in the earlier of this video, that we can combine this use set with the TCC compiler. So as you can see here, I have um, the earlier the log. This is actually the output from the comparison program with the TCC. Uh, as you can see, that as first I 
intentionally left the T in struct and also in to allow GCC to split this kind of error. So we're gonna do something like this. Uh, include directory and then minus pp and then redirect the output into error.log and also you're gonna redirection the standard error output into the standard output so you're not going to miss any output when you do this yep you're gonna have the error as you can see in this in this one and now we can make use of this to automatically populate the quick fix list for us we're gonna do it bit me i q flag lock and you can see here c open you're gonna see that okay we have two entry of quick quick list that we need to do if you like a, okay try to enter this one no it's just description of the first list that we already jumped so it's not going to jump anywhere so yeah but if we jump to the main it's going to jump to that yeah but actually um, because i modified the, the sort code back to the normal already so you didn't see the difference yet so maybe i, I can do it again uh, okay i'm gonna remove n and then i'm gonna remove t here okay and then i'm gonna do the same because uh, I lib means repeat the uh, log and redirect the thing. All right, so error uh, here, yeah, it's the same, and the salt is the same now. And the IQ, okay, and I'm gonna jump to the main, and it's gonna jump to that line. You can see. Can go back. Yeah, and the quick fix list populate from error compilation output from the GCC is going to be yeah going to be quick fix list. It's not local. It's not location list. So yeah, I hope you found this technique useful and see you next time. Thank you.